Hear the latest about how Georgia State University responds to the coronavirus. And Georgia State men's basketball team loses the Sun Belt quarterfinal. All that and more on PRN. Hello and welcome to PRN. My name is Kara Nelson. The University System of Georgia suspends classes for two weeks amid growing concerns of COVID-19. All students are being asked to leave campus by Friday, March 13th and not return until Sunday, March 29th. The announcement comes moments after Georgia Governor Brian Kemp issues a call for action to educational leaders. Today, there are now over 1,700 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. Across the globe, the number of confirmed cases hits over 125,000, but the Georgia State community saw a number of developments leading up to the decision. On Monday, Georgia State student Jason Kuzmiers created a petition to close Georgia State campus. As of today, it has over 34,000 signatures. To put that in perspective, this fall, Georgia State had 53,000 students enrolled, but that's not the only student effort. Following this, Georgia State student Danny Mai submitted a university-wide resolution to the Student Government Association, calling for the same action. On March 10th, Provost Wendy Hensel updated university faculty about academic contingency plans in the message. And the message included nine tasks for faculty to prepare for switching classes online. The next day, SGA President Jasmine Mejia issued a statement addressing the university's action, but this didn't stop concerns from students online. Over the weeks, several students have made statements online alleging Georgia State University's first case of COVID-19. When we reached out to several students, none were able to provide evidence for those claims. On March 12th, the university updated its coronavirus website stating that there are no confirmed cases of COVID-19 at Georgia State. To be clear, the university is in daily contact with the Georgia Department of Public Health, and the department will inform the university about those exposed if anyone tests positive. Provost Wendy Hensel later made this statement to PRN. It is important that we stay calm. Rumors and sharing information that is not from official channels can cause alarm. But the suspension of classes for the next two weeks is a different direction from the university system's initial message. Earlier, staff and students at Georgia Southern University received an email that the university system will continue holding classes. On Thursday evening, the university housing told students in an email that they now have to move out from residential housing by 5 p.m. on Friday. Students that won't be able to have to complete a form by this deadline. Shannon Corey is the interim director of residence life at University Housing, and she says the decision comes from the University System of Georgia. Corey says this lines up with President Baker's initial message that students wouldn't be required to leave for the remainder of the semester. Last night, faculty members at University Housing held a meeting to discuss how to navigate the situation. According to housing member, some were left in confusion. Some students still felt unclear about the move out process. A student living in university housing said they did not know if they would have to move out even after completing the form. Others said the decision did not give students enough time to prepare to leave. Well, it was a little rushed seeing as the RAs told us beforehand that we, didn't, we weren't going to get kicked out. And now it's like, now it's like a first come first serve basis. So I feel like it's kind of it's grimy, like kind of dirty. Like they shouldn't really have to do that and we shouldn't be forced to leave within like literally 24 hours. I was a little annoyed that it came like with um, so little notice, like because you know people have to work and stuff. Like my mom, um, she had to like, cause she's dealing with with like ha having a bunch of people um, not be able to work, so she has to deal with that. And now she also has to figure out how to come down here and get me. So um, it's a little like hectic, but I think it was the right decision. I just wish they made it sooner. Uh, I think waiting until what five o'clock to cancel classes and then three hours later telling residents that have paid for the dorms already to move out within 5 p.m. like that's less than 24 to 48 hours which is like usually the standard um, like for students like me I don't have a car I don't have family members or close friends that can I can stay with close by so it's kind of stressful um, and it's kind of disappointing that as they saw this coming at like across the country they decided to do such a harmful decision to a lot of students. Over 400 residents of Fulton County voted in the nation's first student-led polling location on college campus here at Georgia State. The early voting location was coordinated by the Vote Panthers Vote Coalition and Vote Everywhere. PRN spoke with the organizers, President Evan Malboro, about the initiative. 
Fulton County was looking to expand the relationship between students and um, students and the county when it comes to elections and voting. So my organization, Vote Everywhere, was called into a coalition to come up with solutions for that. And then I started thinking about this specific project when I was researching poll work and how a lot of poll workers, um, the poll working population is an aging population. And a lot of times that causes um, outages and shortages and things like that. So. Um, we kind of came up with the idea is like if you want to expand democracy access, we need more people working in democracy and I think like students will be the best at it. COVID-19 isn't just affecting classes, it's affecting sports too. Let's turn to Crystal White for more information and the latest updates on Georgia State sports. What's going on, Crystal? Thank you, Kara. How's it going, everyone? I'm Crystal White and welcome to PR in Sports. We'll start this week off going with the ongoing effects of the coronavirus. It was announced yesterday that the Sunbelt Conference is suspending all athletic competition. In a statement by Sunbelt Conference, Associate Commissioner Scotty Rogers say, due to the concerns surrounding the spread of the coronavirus pandemic, the Sunbelt Conference has announced that regular season competition and conference championships in all sports are suspended indefinitely. Additionally, the NCAA announced that the men's and women's basketball tournament has been canceled in a statement, quote, Today, NCAA President Mark Emmert and the Board of Governors canceled the Division I Men's and Women's 2020 Basketball Tournaments, as well as all remaining winter and spring NCAA championships. This decision is based on the involving COVID-19 public health threat. However, college sports are not the only event affected by COVID-19. The NBA, NHL, MLS, and the NLB have all suspended their seasons. This comes after Utah Jazz player reportedly Ruby Gobert and Donovan Mitchell test positive with the virus, causing an immediate stop to all games. Keep up with PRN to learn all about the developing news on the coronavirus and its impact on Georgia State University. While the Sunbelt Conference Tournament may be suspended, Georgia State's matchup with Georgia Southern was in full swing. Anthony Patterson has more on the Sunbelt Conference quarterfinal. The Georgia State men's basketball team season comes to an end as they fall to in-state rival Georgia Southern 81-62 in the Sunbelt quarterfinals. Head coach Rod Lanier had this to say about his team's performance and season. We just weren't quite ready for prime time as a team and as a program right now. I think we made some good steps forward. Uh, it was a great learning experience for me in a lot of ways. You know, it was 14 years between timeouts for me. And I I'm just so excited about the staff that we've put together and the future that we have. And, and we learned another good lesson today. It was the last game for fifth year senior Damon Wilson. Here's what head coach Rod Lanier had to say about Wilson as a player and as a person. I told Damon I love him. Um, and that I appreciate him. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the court together, 6 a.m. in the summer, in the off season, and he put the time in, and, uh, and I appreciate that. And, you know, he was bought in, you know, from the start, and uh, you always appreciate that as a coach. Although the Panthers lost tonight, Rod Lanier is looking forward to next season. A lot of good things happened this year, a lot of good things for us to build on. Um, and uh, I certainly learned a lot uh, about the league, about my team, about my staff. And I think we've created a foundation to move forward with um, that I'm excited about. Anthony Patterson, PRN. The Georgia State's women's basketball team also had a pivotal matchup against Georgia Southern. I was able to go to the game. Take a look. I'm at the GSU Sports Arena where Georgia State women's basketball team lost to Georgia Southern 77 to 74. With this loss, this kicks the Panthers out of the Sunbelt Conference Tournament and ends their season. Anytime at the end of the season when you know it's, it's over, uh, you're emotional uh, for the seniors uh, because you know uh, the next year's team is not going to be the same. You know, and so I told them to make sure that they uh, remember this um, moment and this feeling and look at the seniors and ask them how fast this is gone. A lot of times as a freshman, you don't realize how fast four years go. Head coach Gene Hill found some takeaways to head into next season. We're, we got a lot of people coming back, so that's important. I think a lot of people coming back who played a lot of minutes. Uh, so uh, obviously that's uh, a big part of it, but we have to continue to work. 
We got to put the work in. You don't just get better just because you, you come back. You got to do work to get better. And so uh, that's the biggest thing. I think we was able to play a lot of young kids. Uh, we're coming back. We know we have some pieces. We'll add some pieces. So we're excited for the future. But right now, you know, it stings. You can't be thinking about that and stuff. You just you want to win and you want to compete every time, especially uh, when you're playing against uh, them. Crystal White, PRN. This week was a good one for the Georgia State's baseball team as the Panthers won four of the past five matchups. The Panthers defeated North Alabama in their three-game series in a victory over UNC Asheville. Their one loss, however, came to in-state foe Mercer 5-9. These wins, however, moved the Panthers' record to 9-7 on the season. It was a successful week for Georgia State's beach volleyball team as the Panthers swept both COFC Creekside Beach Classic and the Day of Duels. PRN's Anthony Patterson has more. See for yourself. The women's beach volleyball team won all three of their matches Tuesday against TCU, North Florida, and Mercer. The Panthers swept in-state rival Mercer 5-0 to complete their day with three wins. Georgia Johnson led the Panthers in a late rally against the Bears to complete the sweep. Here's what she had to say about her performance and the team performance overall. They were hitting the perimeter almost every single attack that they had, so they were really putting pressure on our defense. But luckily we took them to a third and were able to um, pull it out just with tougher serving in the third set. For head coach Beth Van Fleet, she is excited about the team's performance and wins, but specifically against Mercer. It's always great to play the in-state rivalry, especially with Mercer. They get better and better every year and they continue to challenge us and we hope that we're challenging them as well. It's great because so many of the athletes on both of those teams are local. So we have a lot of friends and families that always make it out for these matches. I'm super proud of how we played. I think we played to our standard. We have some room to grow still, but it was really neat to, to see that rivalry and also the camaraderie between the two teams. Anthony Patterson, PRN. That's all we got for you this week. Be sure to follow us at GSU PRN for the up to minute coverage on Georgia State sports and the impact of the coronavirus. Now, back to you, Kara. Thanks, Crystal. The general education curriculum is in the process of getting revamped to make college classes more enjoyable for students. PRN's Ashton Gates has more on how this will allow students to have more opportunities to take courses outside of their majors. The University System of Georgia recently proposed a plan that will restructure the curriculum to include more exploratory courses. Dr. Michelle Bratton of Georgia State is part of the Implementation Committee for the USG and says the plan will decrease the amount of required classes. There was a kind of twofold effort to um, make the number of required classes smaller um, so that students would have more opportunities to explore different areas. The plan will allow students to take more courses outside of their specified majors. Student Rui Tobar says that this change would be very beneficial for him. I really would not mind having the chance or at least the access to be able to take classes not specific to my neuroscience major. Um, I'd love to be able to take much more, lang like more language classes, much more stuff about history. As of now, the University System of Georgia states that the plan is still in its draft phases, but they didn't take in students' input before drawing it up. I spoke with a Georgia State freshman who says taking student suggestions into consideration is of the utmost importance. I mean, I feel like they should always be hearing the voices of the people that they're affecting. If they're making decisions about a group, they should hear from that group. That just makes sense. Considering all of the changes, Dr. Bratton says a main goal of the board is to maintain continuity and making sure students still graduate on time. One of our main concerns at Georgia State, you know, we really pride ourselves on um, students graduating within five years and not taking classes that they don't need, um, understanding what they need to do to get their degree. Um, and we're going to have to spend a lot of time working with students and figuring out how we can still meet those goals. The new curriculum is expected to go into effect starting fall 2021 and the university system is encouraging students to visit their website to review the plan and to leave feedback. From Georgia State University, this is Ashton Gates for Panther Report News. Georgia teachers will see a decrease in their raises starting next year. Governor Brian Kemp proposed that $2,000 of the budget should be for teacher pay raise. On Wednesday, the Georgia State House approved $28 billion for the new 2021 state budget. Although this appears to be a large amount of money, this budget actually cuts Governor Kemp's plan in half. The Georgia Association of Educators President Charlotte Booker made a statement acknowledging how teachers pay doesn't always cover their medical costs and other expenses. This decision was passed by 134 to 35 vote, and the pay raise should take effect starting September 1st. 
The coronavirus has people around the world on edge. Air travel is banned from the U.S. to over 50 countries, but this isn't stopping everyone from taking vacations. Panthers spring break is next week, and plane tickets are at an all-time low for domestic and international flights. Check out some of the prices for some of the popular spring break trips. Wow, a spring break trip to Puerto Rico is $47, and doubling that price is enough for a round trip to Jamaica. Now, this is good for travelers who are willing to take the risk, but not for airport business. According to the International Air Transport Association, this pandemic is expected to cause a loss of $63 billion to $113 billion on global air travel. Well, that's our show. Make sure you stay connected to PRN throughout the week. And be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at GSU PRN. Also, subscribe down below and let us know if you have plans for spring break and your thoughts on virtual classes. I'm Kara Nelson. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you after spring break.